Glenn Hampton Quantum Maths. Today we're going to go through the HQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2023 Paper 1. Let's go. HQA National 5 Maths 2023 Paper 1, Question 1. Josh earns £9 per hour and works 30 hours per week. Uh, his weekly outdoors are 220 He says always remaining money. He books a holder for £566. He will take £800 spending money with him. Calculate the minimum number of weeks it will take him to save this amount. Okay, so he earns, let's just go through this, £9 per hour, 30 hours per week. So we need to work out his weekly wage. So weekly wage equals 30 times 9. Well, 9 for these is 27, so that's £270. But then his outgoings are £220 a week, so what he's got left per week is equal to £270. Minus 220. Again, there's no need for a sum here. Just count out 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 50 pound is what he's got left per week. And now says Joe saves all of this, so he saved 50 pound per week. And he books a holiday cost in 566 and he needs 800 pounds spending money. So I need to know how much he needs. So for the holiday, he needs. Now I will do a sum just to be in. 566 plus 800, well that's pretty easy, 800, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1300, so 1366. So calculate the minimum number of weeks it will take up to save the amount, you need to do 1366 divided by 50. So you can do that by counting in 50s if you want, or do a sum, I think the easiest way to say it is, one week is equal to £50. That means two weeks is equal to £100. So I need to get up to £1,300. So I need to times that by 13. So times and by 13 weeks will give me 26 weeks. Will be £1,300. So then 27 weeks you can obviously see is 1,350 and 28 weeks he will have £1,400 and he needs 1,366 so it will take him 28 weeks. Obviously you could have just directly divided 1366 by 50 and you would have got 27 points something which is rounding to 28 weeks. SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2023 Paper 1 Question 2. A lorry speedometer is shown. The lorry speedometer is restricted to a maximum of 56 miles per hour. Use the speedometer to calculate this speed in kilometers per hour. <coughs> okay, so let's have a look at this. Miles per hour is on the outside. Kilometers per hour is on the inside. So I need to find 56. Well, let's see if it's going up. Always check if it's going up in ones or not. So it goes up in ones on here. But on the inside, you should be able to see it goes 0, then 20, and there's only 10 in between. So it's actually going up in twos. There's 10 in the middle. So be very careful there. Now let's try and find 56. So we'll zoom this right in. Miles per hour, 55, 56. So there's my 56 here. Taking that straight across, you could have used a ruler for this, but I will. I can do it quite like that. It's going to be right there, so I don't just need to count the kilometres per hour. Remember, this is going up in twos, so it's 82, 84, 86, 88, 90. We get 90 kilometres per hour. Usually a mark for marking it on the diagram and then just for reading it off. It's going to be National 5. Applications of maths, 2023, paper one, question three. The crowd at a rugby match is made up of home, away uh, supporters and people who are neutral. Three-fifths are home, two-fifths are away. Calculate the remaining people that were neutral. So this is your standard adding fractions then taken away to, to get up to one. So I need to first of all do three-sevenths plus two-fifths. So a common denominator is 35, that's just by times the 7 and 5 together. And obviously you can see that this one on the left has been times by 5. You can think of it as a cross, 3 fives is 15. Plus this one on the right has been times by 7, so 2 sevens is 14. 15 plus 14 is 29 out of 35. So 
neutral. Is this going to be the difference between 35 and 39 to get back up to 35 out of 35? So 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 is 6 out of 35. And just a quick check if that's simplified. It should be, hopefully. But the only numbers that go into 6 are 2 and 3 and 6. 2 doesn't go into this number. 3 doesn't go into this number. And neither does 6. So we're done there. Three national five up case the mass twenty twenty three paper one question four. Jeffrey shared his savings between his three children Sophie, Ed, and Lucy. The money was shared in the ratio of seven to two to six. It says Sophie received three thousand three hundred and four pound. How much did Jeffrey give his three children? How much did Jeffrey give his three children in total? So there's our ratio of seven to six. That's Sophie. Suppose that's Ed and Lucy. And we know that Sophie's share was 3304. And her share is worth seven parts, so I need to divide by seven to get one part, and then I can times by either the whole total or I can find Ed's and Lucy's and then just add it all together. But let's just find one part first. So one part is equal to 3304 divided by seven. Now, if you don't know your seven times table, just take a quick note of it at the side, but I do, so I'm just not going to do that. Seven times four is 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33 gives me five left over. Seven sevens is 49, leaving one. Seven twos is 14. So one part is equal to 472 pound. So then I could either times by two and times by six and add it all together. Or I could realise that I've got 7, 8, 9, 15 parts in total. So I could just times this number by 15, which is what I'm going to do. But either option is working for you. So total parts is equal to 7 plus 2 plus 6, which is 15. So total amount. I need to do 15 times 4, 7, 2. So let me just set up a normal sum like this. Or you could times by 10 and times by 5 and add it together. Or times by 10 and half it and add it together. There's lots of options here, but I'll just do a standard sum. 5 twos is 10, carry 1. 5 sevens is 35, plus 1 is 36. 5 fours is 20, plus 3 is 23. And then 10. So it's 1 times 2, 1 times 7, 1 times 4. Carefully adding these together. I get 0, 6 and 2 is 8, 7 and 3 is 10, carry 1, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the total amount is equal to, with a pound sign, £7,080. And we're done there. It's going to be five upgrades the maths, 23 paper, one question, five. Eddie runs a stall at a school fundraiser. The game requires two spinners to be spun and allowed to come to rest. The spinners are shown, so we've got one spinner which is colours and one is numbers. A prize of is one if one spinner lands on blue or green and the other spinner lands on an even number. Calculate the probability of not winning a prize. Well, there's lots of ways to do this, but one of the standard ways is to work out all the probabilities with a sample space diagram is what it's called, or you may just know it as a table. So on one side I'm going to write red, green, yellow, one red again, and then we've got blue. That's our options for the first spinner. And the second spinner goes one, two, three, four, five. Might be handy just to call that R, G, Y, R, B. So in the middle is all the chances of things happening, right? So we've got red and one could happen, R1, R2, red and three, red and four, red and five. Or we could go green in one, green in two, green in three, green in four, green in five. Or we could go yellow in one, yellow two, yellow three, yellow four and yellow five. Or we could get back in red in one, red in two, red in three, red in four, red in five. Or we could get blue in one, blue in two, blue in three, blue in four, blue in five. So there's all the things that can happen from getting two spinners. Now it says a prize is one if the spinner lands on blue or green. 
and the other spinner lands on an even number. So let's start highlighting the winning cells. We can have blue, which is the bottom ones, and it has to be even. So two is a winner and four is a winner. It also wins if it lands on green with an even number. Two is a winner, four is a winner. So we've got one, two, three, four winners. Is that right? Blue and green. And even, well, there's only four winners. So how many losers is there? Well, we can either count them or use a bit of maths. We've got five by five options is 25. Take away these four means I've got to lose a chance of 21 out of 25 possibilities. Just double check that that is simplified. That's simplified. So we're done. But with this question, there is a number of ways you could do this. Basically, you just need to just calculate how many chance probabilities are there, what's the chances of all the things, and you need to work out how many things you don't want to happen. Now, you could have worked out how many things you did want to happen, then add up to one, and listed them in any way, but that's one of the neatest ways to do it. It's great national five applications of maths, 2023, paper one, question six. Okay, and he buys a new fridge, the original price was 650. The shop is having a sale with 20% off all fridges. It then says he goes into the shop and he gets an additional 2.5% off the sale price. How much does he pay for a fridge? Do not be tempted to take away 22.5%, 20 and 2.5. That is not what's happening here. You're getting 20% off, then you've got a new price. Then you're taking 2.5% back off. They always try and trick you with this one, especially when you're going to buy carpets, so be careful with that. Let's do 20% then. So 20% of 650. Well, the easiest way to do that is find 10% by dividing by 10, so that's 650. And then double it up to 20% to get £130. So we now know we're getting £130 off. So the new price, before we get the additional bit, is 650 minus that £130. That gives me 5 minus 3 is 2, and 6 minus 1 is 5. £520 is the sale price. Now I need to take away 2.5% of that. So 2.5% of £520. Now 2.5% seems quite unwieldy with a non-calculator paper. So a couple of ways you could do this. Do 25% and divide by 10, or how I always like to think of it, find 10%, half to find 5%, half again to find 2.5%. So if I find 10% of 520, that's dividing by 10, so I'm at 52. That means 5% is going to equal half of 52, which being very careful is 26. 2.5%, which is half again then, is 13. So that means my new price, my next new price is 520 minus 13 pound you might just be able to do that without any sum here and get the nans of the 507 but just in case you are doing a sum borrow from here to get one and that's 10 10 minus 3 is 7 1 minus 1 is 0 5 minus nothing is 5 so he pays 507 pound i want that there it's green national five applications to maths 2023 people one question seven Biscuits are sold in tins in the shape of a cuboid as shown. The tins need to be packed into boxes with the lid facing upwards. There are two types of boxes available with the dimensions shown, box A and B. Calculate the maximum number of tins going to be packed. Use working to justify your answer. This is actually a simplified version of a box packing because usually you can take your container and just move it around in different positions. But in this case, since this box is the same on the length and the breadth, it doesn't matter whether I turn that around, it's going to be the same either way. I need to keep that lid facing up. So really all I need to do is work out how many of these go in this box and how many of these go into that box. And then just pick the best box. There's only one option for each. So let's look at box A. So our dimensions are 10, 10 and 15, 42, 51 and 50. So we've got 42 centimetres on one side, that's the length, the breadth is 51, and the height is 50. And we need to know that the length and the breadth need to go along the length and the breadth, because 
the box that needs to be facing up the way, so the height needs to be a match of height. But 10 and 10 is the only options. And then we've got 15 height. So our 15 matches this one. So this is a big box, I suppose, and this is a small box. And then we've got 10 matches this one and 10 matches this one. So once we've worked out which size go with which size, we just divide them. So 42 divided by 10, but only whole number answers. You can't go above. So just do 10, 20, 30, 40. That equals about 4. Notice the little tiddles means about, right? And then 51 divided by 10, that's about 5. 5 tens are 50 with one remainder. And then 15 into 50, 15, 30, 45. It's going to be 3 and a bit. So 50 divided by 15 approximately is 3. So in total, remember we just times our answers together, 4 times 5 times 3, 20 times 3 is 60. So I can get 60 in box A, now I need to do box B. Box B is exactly the same. So for box B, I always like to set it up as a table, my big box against my small box. Our length, breadth and height, so again length, breadth and height. So this time the length of this one, depends what you call the length, but I'm used that, so 45. The other side is 72, and this time the height is 32. And again, we need to have against the height our 15 centimetres, because it has to face up the way. And then the 10 centimetres need to go against the other ones. So doing our sums, we get 45 this time divided by 10, which is about... 10, 20, 30, 44. I'll lose your little tiddles. Then we've got 72 divided by 10, which is about 7. 7 tens are 70. And then we've got 32 divided by 15. 15, 30, that's about 2. So our total for this box is equal to 4 times 7 times 2. 4 7s are 28 times 2 is 56. So determine the maximum number of books to be packed. Max is equal to 60 in box A. Let's be the answer five up because the maths 2023 paper one question eight. Janet travelled by car from her home to a meeting. She arrived at a meeting at 10.15. She travelled 160 miles at an average speed of 40 miles per hour. During the run, she stopped 50 minutes for breakfast. Determine which time Janet left home. So we know she arrived at 10.15, so that's like way over here, that's our arrival at 10.15, say. Yeah. And she travelled for 160, 36 miles at an average speed of 40 miles per hour, so we need to work out the time for that. So let's just make a note of that, we need to work out that time. But then, during the dinner she stopped 15 minutes for breakfast, so I can take away that 15 minutes to start with. So going back 50 minutes. The easiest way to do that is take away your 15 minutes, so that gets me to 10 o'clock, and then the difference, 25, 35, 45, that leaves 35 minutes off of 10 o'clock, so that's 9.30, Let's just say she stopped there, it doesn't really matter what, when she did a break. So then the time, well, speed. The time, well, distance equals speed times time. A couple of ways you can do this, if you can remember all your formulas, or a triangle sometimes help, the distance speed time triangle, where we want to work out time, so we couple it up, and it says distance divided by speed, or we can just rearrange the formula, time is distance divided by speed. Whatever way you do it, you get distance divided by speed. The distance is 136, and we're dividing by 40. You will probably have to do a sum for this then. 136 divided by 40, 40, 81, 20 is 3, decimal point time then, add some zeros, it doesn't really matter how many, I'm on 120, so I need 16 left over, now start counting again, 40, 80, 120, 160, that goes in exactly 4 times, so I'm now on 3.4 hours, which is kind of useless to us. 0.4 of an hour, we're going to have to change that to minutes. So 3.4 hours, so I've got 0 0.4 hours is equal to 0 0.4 times 60, because it's 60 minutes in an hour. 
But it's 24 minutes. How did I do that so fast? Well, if I think about times in by 10, first that takes me to 4, and then it's just 6 left, 4 6 is 24. So 3.4 hours is equal to 3 hours, 24 minutes. So I'm going back up to my little diagram, I need to take away 24 minutes. So let's take away the 24 minutes. That leaves me with 9.01 a.m. And then I need to take away the three hours. 9.876.01 a.m. So just to answer the question, left home at 6.01 a.m. And we're done there. Next screen, National 5 Applications to Maths, 2023, paper 1, question 9. The design of a skate park ramp is shown, the height is 70 centimetres. To be suitable, the ramp must have a gradient of 0 0.35 plus or minus 0 0.01. Determine whether the ramp is suitable. So you work out the gradient. The gradient is vertical over horizontal. A vertical is 70 centimetres, but our horizontal is 2.1 metres. So we're going to have to make it all the same units. So I'll keep it all in centimetres to have bigger numbers. That's 70 over 210 centimetres. So simplifying that, that gives me 7 out of 21. And simplify that again, because 7 goes out of 21 three times, that's a third. Change a third to a decimal. We should maybe already know a third is 0 0.333, but if you don't, you can quickly do a wee sum. 1 divided by 3. 3 doesn't go into 1, so add some zeros. 3 threes are 9. Add 1. 3 threes are 9. Add 1. You should be able to see that it just goes 0 0.333 forever. And now it says the term for that is suitable. So we've got this tolerance here. So our max, it can be is 0 0.35 plus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.3. Six and our min is equal to zero point three five minus zero point zero one, which is zero point three four. So the ramp has to have a green a between zero point three four and zero point three six. So is it suitable? Not suitable because zero point three three is less than. The min of 0.34. And we're done there. Anyway, Next week, National 5 Applications to Maths 2023, Paper 1, Question 10. John owns a bike shop and has a team of mathematics. John owns a bike shop and has a team of mechanics to build each new bike. The table lists the tasks that need to be completed, so we've got a precedence table to complete. Complete the diagram below showing we're writing these tasks and the times in the boxes. So we've got the first one's on one of them's on with them for us, D and two. So there's our D, which is two minutes. And before D, we've got G, H, I, and J. So G, H, I, and J could go in these boxes, and we kind of need to work from there. But I'm going to find our first one first because I always work from the start. Our first task is F because it's got no preceding task, and F has got a time of two minutes. So I can write F and two in this first box here. Because that's our first task. Now, after F, we have got this one, this one, and that's it. Two tasks. So the easiest way to do this is try an error. Try it one way. If it doesn't work, just go back and try again. So let's just try it one way. After F, we could have attached basically to bike clamp stand. That's A for one minute. And then, because it's not that one off, looking at A, after A, we could have B and C and H. Well, I've not got enough space now in that place, so I can just delete that A and go, look, I need three places to happen. So I need to, if I go here, I'm not going to be able to do it here. I'm going to have to go this way. So there you go. A has to go in there. So deleting that, I can put my A in one in here and go back up to where A was, and then we've got B, C, and H comes after A. 
So again, I'll just put them in anywhere. B, C, and H. Taking a note of our numbers, 1, 7, and 5. And then I'll just check what comes after B. So B, C, and H is done. After B, we have got J. So we could put J here. And J is 3. And after J, let's hope it's D. Yes, it is. So that one's in the right place. Or it could go that way. It doesn't really matter now. After C, looking down this list, we've got inflate halves for four minutes. So we've got the I takes four minutes. And just check after I, we we'll go back to D, because if not, we need to do something else. After I, we we'll go back to D, so that's okay. And then check H. What comes after H? It's D, so that one's okay as well. So now we can go back down to this branch and complete. After F is E, that is one minute. So I can put E in one. And after E is G for one minute, so I can put G in one, and just double check that after G, we go back to D, which we do here, so we've done that one. So we've completed our table. John thinks, the table mechanics have a big line in 50 minutes. Is he correct? Well, how you do these pressing tables is you start at the start, so I've got task two minutes, and then, it's the longest of these two, which is one minute. So add one minute. And then when I move on, I need to wait until the longest of these is finished. So that's seven minutes. So seven minutes. And then it's the longest of these two, that's four minutes. And then it's two minutes at the end. So that's the critical path, we call that. Seven plus three is 3, 2 plus 3 is 1, plus 7 is 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 2 is 16 minutes, is the minimum time. John is wrong since 16 is bigger than 15. And we're done there. A survey, SQA National Fire Up Case of Maths 2023, paper 1, question 11. A survey was conducted in the favourite pie films. The results were 80 for apple, 40 for cherry, and 60 for lemon. Construct a pie chart to illustrate this information. So to construct a pie chart, we need a protractor. But first of all, we need to calculate our angles. So calculate your angles. It's each individual, we need to be a fraction of a circle. So it's 80 out of the total times 360, because it's 360 degrees in a circle. So our total, if I just put it at the bottom here, is 80, 120, 130, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, which is handy because 180 goes into 360. So the fraction for the first one is 80 out of 180 and times the 360 for the angle. So you can do this division first, which is 2 times 180. You can do this division first, which is 2 times your 80, which is 160 degrees. Similarly for this one, 40 out of 180 times 360. Well, 360 divided by 180 is 2 times 40 is 80 degrees. And your last one, 60 out of 180 times 360. 60 divided by 180 is 2 times 60 is 120 degrees. Just double check that these three numbers add up to 360. So We've got 120, 200, 360, so chances are you're okay. So now you get your protractor and start filling this in. So I've got my protractor, so now we turn that around so that it's vertical. We make sure the, the middle goes on the dot, and we make sure it's lined up through the zero as best you can. Now, mine's won't be as accurate as yours can be, because I'm using electronics. But the first angle I want to draw is 160 degrees. So there's my protractor. It's going through the outside scale. So go all the way around to 160, which is way down here. And I make a little mark at that point. 
and then get rid of my protractor and we get a ruler and join this up. I don't need a ruler on my pad, I can just make a straight line by joining it. So let me just get it back to this normal size. It's going to go to there and then I can just adjust it and make sure it fits. And we're done there. Let's just double check that angle before we move on. 160, we're done. Well done. Let's move on to our next angle. Next angle is 80 degrees. So what we do is we get our protractor. We turn it around so that it's lined up against our new line. So putting that in the middle, lining it nice and up as best you can, pushing it up. A fine adjustment, good enough for me. And then we're looking for 80, so I'll zoom in. We're still going through the bottom scale. So zooming in, going all the way down to 80, which is over here. And moving it out of the way and getting your straight line and your ruler. Joining it up through that zero, making sure it's nice and neat to the end. And again, always double check, have you done an 80 degree? So my protractor on the middle. Yep, it's going 80, so we're good there. And then we can just measure our last angle to make sure that it actually is 120. It should be if you've done everything accurately, but a, a double check is always handy. Turn it around so it's going through our new line, line it up. Slightly off, but I'll take that because I'm doing that on an iPad. You just try to be as accurate as you possibly can to get this. You can see it's pretty much bang on. So there we are. We can then just label our pie chart. So let me get rid of this. So the first one we drew was our apple. So I'll label the angle just to be very clear. The angle I drew was 160, 160 degrees. That's apple. And that represents 80 people. Our next one we drew was cherry, which was 80 degrees. So there's 80 degrees. That's cherry. And that represents 40 people. And the last one we drew was lemon, which represents 60 people. And the angle we used was 120, which is in here. And I'll just put our total people at the side. You probably won't need this, but just to be very, very safe, 180. And we've constructed a pie chart. SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, paper one, question 12. Laura makes and sells fruit smoothies. She has tested by kiwi fruit in bulk. She considers the following options. Option one, 35 kiwi fruit for £5.95. Option two, 45 kiwi fruit for £8.10. Determine which offer offers the best value for money. Use work to justify your answer. Often you want to go back down to one thing, but with a non calculated paper, that can be quite tricky sometimes. I'd have to divide by 35 and 45. If I can find a way to get down to maybe 5 or 10, it might be easier. Now, you, you do, these both end in 5, so if I can divide this one by 7, 7 fives is 35, that'll get me down to 5 kiwi fruits, and 9 fives is 45, so if I divide that one by 9, I'll get down to 5 kiwi fruits. So I'm going to examine 5 kiwi fruits. Option 1, 35 kiwi fruits cost 5.95, so I can say 35 kiwi equals 5.95. And then that means dividing by 7, 5 kiwi is equal to, I'll need to do a sum here, £5.95 divided by 7. So 7 doesn't go into 5, so I'll put a 0 point and carry the 5. 7 eighths are 56, 57, 58, 59 gives me 3 left over, 7 fives are 35. So 5 kiwi fruit is equal to £0.85. Or if you prefer, 85 pence. So now we look at option two. Option two says that 45 kiwi fruit equal £8.10. I want to get back down to 5 kiwi still. So dividing by 9, because 9 fives is 45, gives me 5 kiwi. So that means that I need to do £8.10 divided by 9. 9 doesn't go into 8. Carry okay, 8. Nine, 9's are 81. 9 nothings are nothing. So 
£0.90 or 90 pence. So which option is the best value for money? Well, the cheapest one for five Kiwi. Therefore, option one is better value since I'll write £0.85 is less than £0.90 or 85 pence is less than 90 pence. And what done there? SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, paper 1, question 13, the final one. Some senior students are preparing to sell scented candles at the school fair. Before ordering the candles, they carried out a survey to find out which scent people preferred. The results of the survey are shown. Preferred scent, linen was 50%, vanilla was 35%, rose was 10% and cinnamon was 5%. The students sell 180 candles in total, which is 100% then. They sold 65 vanilla candles. Is this more or less than expected? Couple of ways you can do this one. You could do 65 out of 180 and change that to a percent. Or, alternatively, a much easier way to do it, 60, look at your vanilla scented candles, we expect 35%. So vanilla, is meant to be 35%. We sold 180, so I can do 35% of 180 and see that's how many we would expect to sell. So again, percentages, easiest way to do percentages, find 10%, that's divided by 10 is 18. So I can then jump up to 30% by times and by three. Three 18s, well, three 10s is 30 and three eights is 24. So that makes 54. And then I need to add a 5%. So I'm going to add half of 10%, which is 9. 54 plus 9 is 63. So we expected to sell 63. But they actually sold 65. So that means this sold more than expected. Since 63, 65, sorry, is what we sold, is greater than 63. And we're done there. This has been Claire Maths today. We're going through the whole of National 5 Applications of Maths 2023 Paper 1. We did the full solutions. Hope you found that useful. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye. Bye.